Welcome back, Teresa, up here on the Cup Series Media Day. And joining us now is Kurt Busch. And Kurt, congratulations, of course, on the news. You're joining 2311 Racing. Obviously, you still have the rest of the year to go with Chip Ganassi. Have you put any extra pressure on yourself at all to try and get that title, that final title for Chip? Um, I wouldn't say extra pressure, but we all know that this is that moment in time of Chip and Felix Abadis, Rob Kaufman, everybody that's committed so much time and energy and effort to a program for over 30 years. Uh, these last 10 weeks, let's give it our best. Let's go out as strong as we can and give it everything the way that Chip would want. And so we're here. It's now. And we got to we got the playoffs right in front of us. So, Kurt, I want to know what has allowed you to be so competitive over these years? You have uh, one with four teams and took five to the playoffs. That's pretty unreal. How'd you do that? Um, I mean, for me, Bobby, I, I just feel like finding different ways to, to adapt to the setups, to adapt to the tire feel, uh, the downforce levels on the cars that, that change. Uh, it's not getting stuck with certain patterns. But then there's, um, you know, the, the long standing notebook of I know exactly what to do at Darlington at this time during the race or at Bristol coming up. You can't go to the high groove too soon because you got to wait for the rubber buildup and the heat to generate. So little things that you keep the same. But then again, it's like, all right, you got to still find other things to keep learning and adapt. So, Kurt, I find your season a little interesting. You guys started off with a fourth-place finish at the Daytona Road Course. You came back with a solid top ten at Homestead. I even remember your post-race interview at Homestead. You were pumped up about the way you guys were running. But then the next 12 races could not even find the top ten. You actually had six finishes outside the top 20. But now these last couple of months, the win at Atlanta, it's really come to life. And the thing I find coincidental, Ross Chastain and the 42 team, they've come to life about the same time. Did anything really change over there at Chip Ganassi Racing? Yeah, I felt like our, our Homestead race was, was a perfect, now we're, we're rolling. We've been together for a couple of years as a group, and this is our time to shine. And then we got wrecked at Atlanta with a fast car. Uh, and then it was just like everything kept snowballing into this hot mess. Uh, I guess snowballs really aren't hot messes, but we could not <laughs> get out of our own way uh, for the first couple months. And then like I was like, guys, we just need to reset. Let's reset. And then Charlotte, the 600, the engine blew up. And I was like, okay, now we just got a race to try to finish 10th. Let's, let's get that, that solid finish in. And since the 600, yes, we've been rolling. Chastain, their team has matured, and that information going back and forth is much more uh, transparent now. Kurt, I think I speak for the three of us here. We love watching you win because the emotion you show when you win is really incredible. So what would the emotions be like if you got a victory here in the playoffs? I'll tell you, each of the first races in each round, so with Darlington, Vegas, uh, Texas, those are the, the most important ones. If you can win to start a round, that's huge. And so those are all really good tracks for us. Uh, this first round, though, is filled with low downforce and high horsepower with Darlington, Richmond, Bristol. Uh, but we just got to stay focused, stay clean, and not make mistakes in this first round. And then you got to go to the next and adapt from there. All right, Kurt. Well, it's always great to hear from you. We're wishing you the best of luck, of course, in the postseason. Thanks for your time. Thank you, guys. Good to talk to you. For more great NASCAR on Fox content, subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere right around here.